So this is a um, review of the filtration system on the renovated pond here in uh, 2019. A lot of people sent me messages um, asking if I would explain the filtration that I have on this pond. So that's a picture of the filtration, but I'm going to start with what's inside the pond proper um, first. So as you can see on the outside, um, you see the waterfall and then you see two air domes feeding air into the pond. Those are coming from two four inch rhino um, two bottom drains. And over there is a skimmer. So that's the only thing you can see externally. I'm gonna cut over to a video that I did prior to completing the pond that kind of explain the piping that's actually in the pond and then we'll I'll come back and kind of explain what where we are now so here's a quick overview of the plumbing that I got in this pond before the underline uh, underlayment and the liner goes in so you can see up top I have a skimmer it was existing it has a three inch outlet in the back um, we have two Rhino two bottom drains um, with four inch pipe, each one with its individual pipe going all the way out the pond to the filtration system. They are not tied together. Over there in the wall, we have a four inch side drain. This is actually a bottom drain that is placed in the side of the pond. Um, we have three TPRs that are two inch and they're the angled TPRs um, sold by Dream Pun. There's one there in the wall. There's another one back there in the wall. And then there's one below us. Can't see it from this angle because of the shape of the pun. But there's another one right over there. Um, did some stuff with some concrete and blocks to re-level the waterfall, but all the pipes exit down here. You can see the slope, but they all exit right there and they come across this wall and they're all coming out down there. They will go out, make a turn and then they'll go down to the filter system. So now that I've showed you what this pond looks like underneath the water and the liner and what is actually piped into the pond, we'll kind of discuss the rest of the filtration system. So on the outside, what you can see right now is just the back side of the skimmer and that white pipe is just an overflow pipe. So when it rains and the pond overflows, instead of it going all the way up to the top, which is dangerous for the fish, that controls the level of the pond. So all of the overflow comes out of that pipe and it goes down to that white pipe and out the property and out to the street. So all of the piping in this pond exits underneath those plants and they come down to the filtration system. So I'm gonna pan all the way out and show you that that's the pond and the skimmer right up there and here is the filtration system those two sieves which is a sea to sieve and an aquafort sieve are at the same level as that pond water my property goes uphill to the pond so they sit level with the level of the water in the pond so what is coming out of the pond is the two bottom drains here four inch bottom drains and they're going to an aquafort sieve the two four inch drains go straight into the sieve with two ball valves on here you'll see that i put two 90 degree elbows off of this which are two inch pipe and those are bypasses if for some reason i ever need to change the sieve something happens it goes bad or whatever i can turn off those two gray valves turn on those two gray valves and be able to continue to direct suck water from the pond and um, keep water moving 
or if I ever need to empty the pond completely, I can um, use those two pipes to completely empty it because they'll suck all the water out of the drains. In addition, the four inch um, sidewall drain is coming into the back of this seed sieve. And we'll go up close and talk about the two seeds. So this is the aquafort sieve. It has a screen in it. I can't remember if it's 200 micron or 300 micron, but it does not allow much stuff through. Um, this is the more manual option of a sieve versus the rotary drum filters that we see a lot of that's becoming more and more popular. I don't mind this filter because it does not take um, as much cleaning as some people say they do. And I'm going to demonstrate just how quickly you clean it. So the way I have this sieve plumbed is this is the drain that drains all of the stuff that collects on the top of the screen. So there's a drain hole there and it goes to this gate valve. When this gets a lot of stuff on it every day or every two days, I just open this gate valve and I use this ballast that goes up and down and I purge this um, screen and it will flush everything out of there. So I just push it down with my hand and you can see how much water floods that screen. Push it down and it'll clean whatever is on that screen. Now I did it earlier so there's not a whole lot on top of it. But that is, that is how long it takes for me to clean the screen. There is no spraying a, spraying a hose every single day, this, that, and the other. That is not necessary. So it doesn't take much. You see it took, what, 45 seconds max. Um, <clears throat> and that just goes out my drain pipe and then out that drain out to the side yard. So how this is working, and I'm going to do one sieve at a time. So like I said, these are the two bottom drains, two drains coming into one Ultra Sieve 3. This is the pump line, and these are the two bypasses I showed you that are currently off, so no suction is happening there. But this is going to a Pentair variable speed pump, um, and it's one where you can dial it um, to run on different programs or to whatever speed you want it to dial on. It's fairly quiet. The noise you hear is actually from my air conditioning units over there not necessarily these pumps and then there's an air pump behind me but from the two bottom drains into the sieve to the pump that has a leaf basket on it but with these sieves they filter so fine that nothing ever makes it to that leaf basket so they stay empty forever they'll turn green from algae but they never really get any build up in them so after the pump is pumped into a aquadyne bead filter um, which has a blower. I suggest if you ever get a bead filter, get a blower on it. They tumble the beads around when you're back washing them to make sure they don't get compacted and it's just much easier. I have had both and I'll never own another bead that doesn't have a blower. You don't know that it's messed up until you open it up and see what's in there that you can't see. So after it goes through this bead filter, which for me, I do not count on this bead filter to provide any bio. It, it's just not enough for a pond and the amount of fish that I have in here. I use this bead filter to polish my water. This bead filter, according to the Aquadine engineer, can polish the water down to 15 microns, which is actually supposed to be smaller than that of a RDF if you put the right pressure through it. Too much pressure and pump going through it will basically macerate the gunk in there and push it or force it through the beads um, and basically send it back out into your filter system in fines. So this is rated for 6,000 gallons an hour. Anything over 6,000 gallons an hour and you start to push the gunk through the beads and you don't get the filtration. So after my water is polished, it leaves the bead filter and it comes over here and it's split. A portion of it goes through this 120 watt UV unit and back over to the return to the pun. The other part goes over to, um, it just bypasses the UV and it goes into this three inch pipe there that goes down 
and it returned to the top of the hill into this shower. So let's talk about the shower. So inside this little um, bamboo um, house, tea house is what I call it, is my shower stack. And I got a whole bunch of mulch by the door. Hold on. So inside this little house is that same three inch pipe that comes from those two bottom drains in the UV. And they come up to these showers. And they're like the Baki shower, except there's not Baki media in it. So it's a different type of ceramic media. I'm going to lift the top of this and check for wasp first. But you can see inside there's a spray bar and these little ceramic rods are in there. Um, it showers down through those trays and then it exits through those three three inch pipes in the bottom of the trays. So I do want to show you while I'm up here that on this system I have flow through which means there's a hose coming from my faucet and it is city water and it's not dechlorinated that's going at 40 gallons an hour of fresh water into the pond. This dilutes everything and keep the water refreshed. It basically simulates a stream running into a lake or into a pond. It refreshes the water. Um, that's for a whole nother video. But one thing that I did for this 3,000 gallon top pond to this pond is in case something was to go real crazy or real bad, I can isolate this pond off of my main system. Over there is where the waterfall, the water goes to the waterfall to the main pond. There's actually a big flap of liner in there. I can pull that liner up, put a block behind it, and make this a separate pond. And then I have a bottom drain in this pond and also TPRs in this pond. So I can hook up a bead filter, I have extra, hook up a bead filter to the bottom drain and the TPR and be able to run this little 3,000 gallon pun independent of the main pun down below. So going back down to the filtration system is the sidewall drain going into the C2C, which the C2C basically works just like the other one. It has a drain hole in the bottom and it has a ballast that goes up and down and it has gunk in the bottom too and you can just drop it. Um, I'm having trouble doing it and stuff at the same time but you can rinse it. I'm having trouble doing it with um with uh with my with my hand sorry with my hand trying to record and everything i actually had turned off the drain pipe here which didn't allow that stuff to go out so that's why i didn't move out so Anyway, that's what it was supposed to do. So, <clears throat> there's another pump that is actually pull pulling from the C to C, which is here. This pump is pulling from, this is the C to C. It has a uh, check valve on it. And it has a check valve on it because this is the pipe coming from the skimmer. If I didn't put this check valve on here, when I turn this system off, water to balance out would continue to flow from that skimmer backwards into this C to C. It's kind of hard to explain, but trust me, this check valve was necessary right here. Um, so 
anyway, so I have the ability to pull from both the Cetus, um, which is the sidewall drain, and the skimmer. There is a valve over here, which is to that skimmer, that I have turned down so I can regulate the flow coming from the skimmer versus how much I want to come from the sidewall drain. So that's how I regulate that flow. This water from the sidewall drain and the skimmer go into this pump from the Cetus, so it's already went down to 200 or 300 microns, and then it is pumped up into the second Aquadyne bead filter with a blower, um, polished down to 15 microns, and then it is just pushed back through the three TPRs that are going to the main pun that are in the wall of the main pun. Now, you'll see a couple of extra pipes on this that kind of makes you go, where, well, where is that one going? Well, this additional one over here that's turned off is actually connected to that TPR in the top pun. And there is an additional suction here that's connected to that bottom drain in the top pun. So if I had to, I could turn this sidewall drain off in the main pun and the skimmer off in the main pun and suck directly from the bottom drain in the top pun and filter it with a bead and return it to the TPR in the top. That's just another redundancy that I put in to kind of help um, manage this whole filtration setup. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell as far as the filtration part of this goes. Again, it's two bottom drains going to an aquafort sieve, from the aquafort sieve into a Pentair variable speed pump into a Aquadyne bead filter, and then it's split into 120 watts of UV because you, you can't send 6,000 gallons an hour of water through um, a UV that's too fast and you won't get the, the kill rate that you should get. Um, it's not down to direct science how I've done it, but it works for me, so if it works, I'm not changing it. And then we have the sidewall drain going into a Cetus sieve, which is split um, with a pump sucking from it, as well as sucking from my skimmer. And that water is going from that pump into the second bead filter, and from that bead filter to the three TPRs. This bead filtration is the same one that if I need to, I can cut over and run that top pun independent of the bottom pun and separate the filtration systems. So that I believe is all of the water parts of this filtration system. Over there is the air pump. It's, it's one line at the top coming out of it. This is a 80 liter pump, 80 liter per minute. And that's where it controls, the, it splits into the two bottom drains and I can control how much air is going to each. Luckily, mine balanced out without me having to do anything with those valves and it seemed to have worked. Um, one thing that's helpful, just a tip, is when you plumb all of these pumps and stuff in, putting them on switches instead of having to um, plug them up makes it a lot easier. This switch can turn this pump on and off. And then inside this cover is another switch that turns this pump on and off. That's a lot easier than pulling on cords all the time. It makes life so much easier. Um, I think in the previous video, you guys heard me talk about a smart switch. This is the smart switch that the air pump is plugged into currently. And I can control this from my phone and turn off the air pump so that I can uh, view the fish a little bit better. You can also set that on a timer so that the, the air or the skimmer goes off when your uh, automatic feeders go off so that it doesn't get sucked up by the skimmer. Um, but I hope this was helpful. That's the filtration system in a nutshell. Again, it's gravity fed. It seems very confusing, but it's not. You just have to walk each pipe through all the way from one end to another. 
Um, I'm gonna try to insert some photo diagrams of what this filtration is with some arrows that show the water flow and hopefully that will kind of help complete the picture and help you understand. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message. I'll try to respond um, to help answer any questions. I'm not a professional. I did do all of this myself um, with a whole bunch of phone call help um, from some friends, particularly um, at the Koi store over in Georgia, as well as Kevin um, up at Happy Koi in Greenville. So anyway, I hope this was helpful.